Hello and welcome back for another Tafficles Battle Report and this is from the 2017 to the Strongest World Championships. Uh, very nicely run event. Uh, it's the third year. I was there last year, got to the final. I uh, got roundly stuffed. <laughs> so I seem to do a little bit better this year. And just to say the way the point system works, I should put a chart up. It's very simple. You get it's based on people having 10 medals before they break. Uh, if it's a bit more, a bit less, they sort of uh, adjust it in by percentages. But my army breaks on 10 medals, a lot do, so it's quite nice and easy. They're worth 10 points each for all the ones you capture from the enemy. You also lose 5 points for every one you lose from your own army. It's a bit of a negative way of looking at it. The way I look at it is you get 10 points for every enemy medal in your hand at the end. 5 points for every one of your own medals in your hands at the end and 50 points if you won. So if you add all that lot up it's a possible 200 points. Uh, if you get a draw though, say you get 9 of the medals, you're going to get 90 plus whatever you got left. So the most you can get is about 135 points. So it's worth going for a win or lose rather than a poor draw. Because if you lose you lose. <laughs> you still get the 10 points each for the medals you've taken. You're not a lot worse off. Uh, you're better off going for decisive results. Nice simple system. I like it and I know uh, Roger and I came up with something quite similar actually for the Basic Impetus 2 tournament which is coming up 25th of March. So please look out for that. I'll put a link up. And on we go. It's, um, let's get into the first game. And first up it's uh, Jan had come all the way from Belgium for the tournament. There's a couple of them come over every year and they're great fun. They're there for a trip. What a laugh. Um, in first to Jan, he hadn't played the game very often. It shows you how accessible to the strongest is because he played the game mostly on instincts. I mean, he did know the rules and played well, but he hadn't had you know, loads and loads of games of experience and there he was competing. Uh, really nice army. Uh, the army list appears in a second, but I think it's easier for this page, for this photograph. So basically got three big pipe blocks, a uh, block of hoplites. It looks like four pipe blocks, isn't it? I'm sure it was three. Anyway, um, and then light infantry and some cavalry. And of course, led by Alexander the Great. And he is great. <laughs> he's cracking. Uh, so he's got all the usual stuff about being a brilliant commander. Um, he's also mounted. And he's travelling, of course, with his companion cavalry, which can form a wedge. Got the, so we've got the Thessalian cavalry, which form the rhomboid, and uh, yeah, I mean my army. I've got Mark Antony's my general because I didn't want to pay the points for Caesar, and I felt a bit like I should have had Caesar. I mean, you had Caesar against Alexander, uh, battles of the titans of the ancient world's generals. Uh, so when we go, we can have a quick try to have a look at his list. Yeah, I was good enough to print off an A3 copy, which I didn't do a great job of uh, photographing. <laughs> Well, in fairness to me, I, I had been up late the night before finishing all my markers and bits and pieces. Up very early, long drive down. I had so much adrenaline. I was enjoying myself so much in the day. I wasn't tired or anything, but I was rushing around a bit trying to get things off and running. It's the rise of Macedon Army if you're looking for it. If you put in all the minimums for 130 points, you haven't got a lot of change, so you can work it out yourselves. But there you can go through the details if you want to zoom in and pause there. Okay, so we're looking at the battlefield. Neither of us wanted much terrain. We more or less put the minimum on that we possibly could. Those big pipe blocks don't like moving around. As you know, I had to put a few obstacles in the way. Those rocks are mine because my uh, legionaries can dance around them a lot better than deep pipe blocks can, which have to, uh, well, man all maneuvers are difficult. And when you start doing stuff like, like that, they're doubly difficult, which is how it should be. I mean, they're formidable from the front, but they're not so great at dancing around things or maneuvering. So that's more or less what we got. And the cards came in, moved things around a bit, took a few more off, and we're left with that. So he's got a little bit of a defensive position there. It looks nice and open. Um, let's just get stuck into each other. So I've turned my um, ace in the hole, uh, which is cry havoc and loose the pigs of war. <laughs> and this is great. If you charge, if you're infantry, charged by cavalry, you get to deploy wherever it is you're hell traps and all that kind of stuff and it's quite devastating because if you read the bottom half of there the card may be played when any friendly foot unit is charged by enemy mounted side chariots or elephants the enemy charge is cancelled 
The command's activation phase ends and the charging unit must make a save or else become disordered or lost. So with Alexander romping around on his horses, that could be quite a useful one. I remember I got that card last year and I had my uh, Teutonic Knights, which were all mounted. <laughs> it's like, oh, thanks. I don't actually have any foot units that can get uh, charged. That's what it's about. Yeah. It's my infantry somewhere, perhaps. Anyway, on with this battle. There's the deployment. And um, I've done my usual thing where I boxed up my army in what I call it a sort of column, really, where you put two in the same box. My army looked very small, especially against a massive figure count on the far side there. Um, I have boosted my figure count, if you look closer, to quite a lot of figures per base. But wow, that was quite a daunting sight. And what I'm trying to do here, it's a bit of a feint to the left. I want to fight this battle on the right. So I'm going to put the minimum possible on the left-hand side, one of my familiar tactics if you watch from the other games, the minimum on the left-hand side to slow up that pike advance. It's a bit like the practice game I had with Rogers Chinese, so this worked out quite well from there. And then on this open flank, there's our Alexander Cavalry with his allies, a small units holding that flank. If I can charge down there really fast and try and smash into that corner, and I just hope I can hold this side while I go for the flanking uh, around the back. Ironically, it reminds me very much of Guagamela, where Alexander did the same thing um, against the Persians, where his army is a bit more like mine. I know the pikes are on the wrong side of the table, but there's a smaller army looking to pin while the cavalry whistles around the flank. Oh, well, that was the plan. Okay, so there's another shot. Oh, yeah, my army wasn't quite that small. I managed to plug another command in on the right-hand side here. So this is the feint. I feint over to the left, but because my army's so small, I can squeeze my last command in on the right here. Uh, vastly outnumbered still, but not quite as bad as the last picture made it look. And we're off. And as you can see, I've gone steaming up the table on the right-hand side, done very well on activations. Move, 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 move. I uh, get the extra charge move at the beginning. There's no archers to stop that. And um, the, the only thing stopping me in a way was those uh, difficult terrain pieces of the rocks. On the left, no field activations. That's far enough. I've learnt something from experience that if you are trying to hold a flank, give the space. Because if I get too close, uh, they can start getting chopped at quite quickly and I just don't have the forces there. One command has been split. They're no longer two per box. It's just a thin screen while a solid block hitting on the right. So here's a close-up. You can see my javelin markers. Get a little bit ugly there. Um, and the the other markers here on the left, obviously the pillums. And there's the cavalry trying to fly in. Is that three on top of the six, which ended that activation, unfortunately. But I'm looking at it thinking, old Alexander on the top right there hasn't got a lot of room to manoeuvre. You know, the skedaddles across the back of the camps, which would be a bit ignominious for the one of the greatest heroic leaders of the ancient age and all that rough terrain to go through camps. Um, or he comes out and fights a little bit outnumbered here. I'm with the best cavalry, but as you know, they can do miracles, these Romans, and there's plenty of help nearby. So there we are, the pikes, of course, have come pushing forwards. And the difficult terrain is doing a job on the right already, because it's keeping one out of the fray. And yeah, he's got a tricky decision with those pikes, because if you keep pushing, uh, my legionaries on the right will get a flank. They will turn and charge that flank. So I'm, I'm trying to make it difficult for the pikes to advance too much, but I do need to beat the sub I've got to win the game some way, you can't just avoid fighting. So here's the left hand side up terrifying sights with all those pikes and whatever's on the far left, some cavalry I think, coming uh, steaming towards just <laughs> hardly any guys. Uh, two lots of legionaries you can see there and uh, these are actually just the light, well not light, but they're javelin men on the, on the bottom left hand corner thinking yeah, right. We've got one, two, three, four, five units to stop as a javelin men. But what you will notice are the red counters in the centre. This was a stroke of luck. The pikemen actually attacked the Romans and the pylums hit for once. And he managed to um, hit back. Because the great thing, because the pylums hit, although I underrate them, they are useful sometimes. The pikes, the pylums hit. So the pikemen's then hit on an eight. They missed. And then the legionaries get to fight back, hit again, fail save. And he kept attacking. Um, that really just bogs up the whole flank. That's like 
a result. That's the kind of thing you really hope for. Uh, meanwhile, on the, the other side of the table, you can see here that um, I've now uh, attacking as well. Actually, I think I might have exaggerated how, many, how much damage I did on the, the successor turns. But the guys in the middle, they are pushing hard just to try and get an extra hit in there. The hero's going in. If we can break a hole through that pike block, then this a hole is a big problem because we can dance around those holes. That's what the Romans are great at doing. And meanwhile, there's not much space for Paul Alexander, who's stuck right back in the right-hand top corner, wondering where he can go and what he can do. So sure enough, the Romans have attacked through the center. They got that last hit they needed. You need three hits to destroy a large unit. And now there's a hole. And suddenly you think, oh, do we have a rethink? So I've got the javelins in the bottom left turned to face to the side. Maybe a little bit early to do that. There are a lot of pikes coming through. Yeah, looking back, that might that might not have been the smartest move. But anyway, they just there's a lot of units. There's those two in the top left-hand corner being wasted. One's dead. These other three here. So these two units can hold those five. Has got to give me an advantage somewhere else. Also, the legion, which has now moved into the gap, has got a choice to turn and flank attack there, or advance forward and flank attack the other pikes. So it's getting quite exciting. And this is about turn two. So there's a close-up. Uh, they march into the gap, and they're hoping for a chance to just go in and exploit it now. Uh, yes, yeah, so we started trying to just do some damage on the next block. So you can see the the regions on the right attacking diagonally, uh, not doing much, but we're starting to start on chipping away at that. Now on the far right, here we go. Happy days. The legions are piling up to the table. Uh, I was joking with Simon. Do I, if I get them to the last rank can i cast all my infantry into cavalry <laughs> like like a game of drafts or checkers yeah he didn't seem very amused it was a busy day and it's a poor joke but anyway up we go we're charging up and the cavalry you see in the top right are going straight into the face of um are they thracians where they are the guys in the rhomboid formation on the very 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 far right my like cav you know, as i um as i always say you don't want to be like cav in one of my armies you're always the first one in and the first one out in the casualty box usually so they're going in trying to throw some javelins get some damage done everything is pushing up as fast as it can we want to crush this whole flank before the pikes on the other side get rolling and if we could kill alexander what a bonus that would be all right so there's an overview of the whole battlefield wow they look like 15 millimeter figures from up here don't they they are 28 mils and it's a six foot by four foot table perspective kind of gets thrown as you uh do high angle photographs anyway enough of me waffling on the left pushing up as fast as you can it's open ground those pikes are going to take some stopping they're coming forwards uh top to flank the center is looking very difficult now because what does he do does he turn that block uh that's like to be outflanked and then i've got another unit coming to outflank them ah, that's looking horrible and on the right we're starting to hit alexander and go for the kill up there Yes, yeah, so the unit on the left, I turned them to get that flank attack um, on that block with the view that the other uh, legionary is going to push up and stop them being attacked in the rear by the other point block. Looking back, I don't know. Would it have been better to push them forward and turn to the right? I just want to roll up this overwhelming attack on the left. So I don't know. We can take a pick there. Let me know what you think. And I really want to push up and just stop them getting hit in the rear. That, that was very important. And on the right hand side loads of cards going down get loads of activations the very top right hand corner the light cav i've got up there they're in the flank they throw in their javelins they're going to do something hooray and they've reached the back rank and should get crowned into a king and the cavalry's pushing forward and the legionaries we're really going to crush that corner there's nowhere to run there's nowhere to hide no heroics for you today mr alexander yep so you see that unit in the center it's turned it's attacked in the flank <laughs> and attacked in the flank twice I just can't seem to bash its way through. I guess it's the shield arm for those pikemen. If I came in from the other side, it'd have been easier. Uh, and meanwhile, this, these legionaries need to push up, otherwise I get rear attacked. And that's not good when it's a heavy block. Oh, this is a blurry picture, but I have to keep it in because it's crucial. Uh, right at the top middle of the screen, that's Alexander wondering what he's going to do. To the right of them are the Thracians, completely been overwhelmed. Now they've got the light cav, attack them in the flank two lots of cavalry to the front everyone's chucking javelins the legionaries are piling through happy days alexander does 
I love Jan's style. All the way through this game, it was attack, attack, attack. We had such a laugh. In fact, we did too much chatting and joking. We could have got more turns in if we done if we hadn't, or we'd played quicker anyway. So, he's charged me, and I'm thinking, great, Alexander is charging foot. I've got the Queen of Clubs in my hand. I slap the Queen of Clubs down with enormous glee and say, right, that's it. You don't get any attacks. Uh, your command's finished. It's those poor Thessalians up in the top right hand corner. They can't do anything. They're stuffed. These guys on the left, I think they're part of the same command. They're stuffed, and Alexander has to try and save a wound and a risk to general. Um, and I'm like, yes, and he failed. He failed to save the wound. I was like, I've got Alexander on one wound. I mean, he doesn't die, but his unit's on one wound. If I hit them again, I've destroyed those cavalry. I should destroy the Thessalian cavalry. The whole right flank is gone. Oh, my God, all those empty camps. I just go, bump, bump, bump. They're three points each. The game's done. It's about turn four, turn five. What a great start to the tournament. And look at that. There's my big queen, of, my little queen of clubs. And then he had a big smile on his face. Bosh. Down goes the queen of spades. The perfect card. Uh, he's got that on the Alexander's unit. And it's the first time they fail a save. Uh, the save, the, the wound gets recovered. And they get a hero. It's like... Flick it <laughs> So I've actually made Alexander's unit stronger. Ah, oh, it's one of those great cinematic moments. Alexander being attacked from all sides. He's made the charge. The caltrops have gone down. The horses are stumbling. All sorts of chaos. And uh, he just gets up, rallies the guys. And now nah, we're not wounded. Get back on. You there. And then people are so inspired. Heroes appear. So people say, I must be so frustrated. He's like, no, no, no. This is great moments. I mean, with this game, a lot of the time, the ace in the hole was no good at all. Like last year when I had the uh, defending foot bonus, I had an all cavalry army. But now and again, you get a great position situation like that where both cards were perfect. Anyway, back over to me. And for some reason, I haven't managed to push that blinking legion up there to cover the rear of my guys. Uh, that's looking very open. So they're going to have to take it. Yeah, I'm trying to remember exactly what happened here. But I think the, um, the reason I left the cards on was to show... I think they save on fives because they're veterans, but it's a rear attack, so you get a penalty. So the five's not good enough, the six is. Um, there's a commander there, it, it all cancels out. And at the end of the day, they're still alive, but being attacked in the rear by a large block of pikes, which isn't very pleasant. And the guys on the hill are, are throwing in their arrows and stuff. So they're in a bad spot. This other legion needs to get up and cover them. And it's looking more and more like a sure that you on the left should have pushed up and turned to try and double up on that flank. Oh, wait, no. Six and two threes. Same thing could have happened there as well. So you can see now on the left-hand side, they really are pushing through. Turning my jab into the left wasn't a good idea because it's ended up with being hit on the flank with that cavalry. Everything's piling through up here. Um, and I think I might have lost a unit. No, I'd have shown a picture of that. So the game is starting to turn to a sort of lengthways game. Game. We're going all the way up to the top right-hand corner, hoping to finish off that cavalry and come sweeping round. And all these guys on the left, well, they're unopposed, really. So there you go. Help yourself to the field. It's free. Uh, they're going to have to turn at some point. And I'm hoping before they turn, the usual situation, I want before they turn, I need my other guys freed up from fighting to face them. Or the army broken. What I've forgotten here is these, all these empty camps. Ugh. Right, so this is the heroic drama of the whole game. First of all, we've got the cavalry pinned. And I broke my rules. All that talk about detached commanders, how useful they are, how to use them. I took a gamble, like cavalry, attacking the flank, two attacks to destroy the Thessians that get the ace. End of that command's activation. Ah, oh, I could have screamed. Always do the general first, or detach commander, move it across, anything. Just don't let an ace end your turn. And the legionaries facing against Alexander, they can't throw pilums against cavalry, but they can keep attacking. Uh, they've done a wound there. Uh, the ones behind them attack diagonally and done a wound on those guys. And then, uh, as you can see, end of activation there as well. So very frustrating. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, I should also have mentioned... As you can see, there's a red marker on my cavalry at the back there. Alexander, while wounded, 
got on hate. I didn't save it. So I've had to actually interpenetrate my own cavalry to get the freshman at the front now and the wounded one at the back. So Alexander outnumbered, I don't know, five, three to one, maybe you could call it, uh, or five to two, um, and he's winning. All right, so you see the overall battlefield. Pike's pushing down very fast on the left, me pushing it very fast on the right. Like a classic battle. Whatever people think about the simplicity of this game and the, and the, the mechanisms, you do end up with battles that look like real battles. There's no disputing it. And they feel like real battles on a large scale. Limited control of what's going to happen. Uh, it's gr really is growing on me. Okay, so more drama on the right hand side. Uh, this time, phew, blinking light cavalry did activate. I think I used the detached commander to make sure. But anyway, they've done two attacks in the side. I don't think they might have got one, at, one in. Uh, the cavalry from the front is trying. We're all piling in. And they've gone. The Thessalian rhomboids just destroyed. Uh, better shot of Alexander. Look at those open camps. Oh, if I can get through Alexander, that's the game. That's the game right there. Three points to the deep unit. Two points are ready for the cavalry. We're going to drive that light cavalry off the table for one point more, I think it is. And I think he breaks on... need 13 to break him. So that's... Uh, sorry, three, five, six. If I could take out Alexander's unit, it's probably worth three. If I could kill Alexander, that'd be a bonus. He's worth about four. That'd be the game. But anyway, one or two of those camps. And that's it. It's nice and quick. Uh, good start to the day. Get some coffee and sort my uh, my day out. And you can also see the Roman Legion has done a hit on the, the wedge of Alexander. So he's wounded again. Uh, and difficult to rally because he's got that attacking unit in his face. All right, so the overall situation has changed dramatically. Because there's a bit of fighting in the middle. We're trying to break that pike block. Uh, the legionaries who were in the flank, who were in the flank of that pike block, has now been turned. So they fight sort of a left-right battle. And my legionaries are now outflanked. So it's going to be a struggle in the middle, but I always knew that was going to be a struggle. They were massively outnumbered. I've overcommitted to the right in the hope of a fast win up there. So yes, so there we go. That, like I say, the Thessalians are gone, the light like, cavalry are gone. But I've taken another wound on my front unit, the cavalry. Really annoying. Um, so I think I was a bit cautious here. I didn't want to lose the cavalry. So it's a tricky one because if you attack while disordered, you're hitting on eights as opposed to sixes. So it does make a big difference. You want to try and rally them if you can. Uh, what's the point of missing on eights? You know, we could be hitting on sixes. But both the cavalry's now wounded or uh, disordered. So we can start rallying those. Uh, and also got the other light cavalry that can come flooding in to attack on the flank. And then what happens, of course, the <laughs> Alexander's outnumbered, overwhelmed, charges the Roman legion uh, head on. He's been wounded twice. He's rallied again. Uh, got him hitting on sixes. Hit. Uh, failed, failed to thing. He's, he's, as you can see all the cards there. There's about four activations. And just run through a Roman Legion. <laughs> People say he must be so frustrated. No, it's just, I mean, it ruins my chance in the tournament, maybe. Well, I've still got a chance to win and kill Alexander. But this is drama. This is theatre. It's what you do it for. Alexander the Great, hemmed in, outnumbered, surrounded in the corner. Only option left charge straight ahead smashing his way through the romans on his own with well, just his companions yeah and he advanced into the gap as well I'm not sure if he has to or not i think the camp's heavy cavalry that doesn't really matter he's going to go in anyway that's just the way yan was playing it big smile on his face it's alexander's gonna charge in and take out the next unit so he's if you look at the situation now on the far right got the light cavalry two units of cavalry in the legion all i mean the, all the cavalry out flanking alexander I know he's a wedge and you get special rules and that kind of thing. Um, but still, <laughs> no support from anywhere apart from these guys. Who also got a pip on the legions. They're beating the legions as well. Ah, it does your head in sometimes. I mean, life. <laughs> Not just this TTS game. And meanwhile, my legion in the middle is looking a bit shaky now because it's got a wound on it. And it's been attacked in the flank. The problem is you can't... Um, if you rally, you get minus one for each unit that can attack them, which is three. If it looks one on the hill can attack as well. So you can penetrate through the friendlies. So even though it's a veteran legion, say one of five, maybe a one for the general four, there's minus three for all those attackers. Makes it onto seven. So he was trying to attack with the pike block uh, into the rear, but you have to fight the unit in front of you. So 
that was a meter. I've got to break that pipe block and turn so I can bail out my mates there. Um, bottom left hand corner, sorry, it's just scrolled off, but the, the javelins have turned to face a whole block of pipemen supported by cavalry. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck, auxiliary chaps. So you see, we're desperately trying to rally or something just to give these guys a better chance. Oh yeah, the other thing I should have mentioned is the Romans, what I'd like to do normally is step back to improve the rally chances, but they can't do that because there's a unit at right angles to them behind them, and you can't go backwards diagonally. So basically you've got to either rally or fight, and there's no other way out for them. So I think I could have handled that a bit better. It's not quite sure how, yes, yeah, so if you see their situation, they can't go backwards because the unit behind them. Um, so I've now got two to one against the block in the middle, we're attacking diagonally, you see the cards appearing right in the middle of the table, just the left attacking diagonally across that rock trying to break those so we can relieve the other legion which is manfully holding on relying on its armor top right as you know we're trying to destroy alexander's unit i do it to get him as well he has a special root rule because he's heroic so normally uh, an ace or two uh, would kill him but he draws two cards and they both have to be uh, aces or twos so i worked out ace two is one in five chance so to get both of them a one in 25 chance of killing alexander which I think is a brilliant rule. You shouldn't be scared of losing him. He should be in there swinging his sword and doing exactly what he's doing in this battle. Right, so the cavalry, I've moved one up to the top level, as you can see, the wounded one. They're going to turn to get a rear charge. What I've done, I've actually blocked out the light cav. And as the heavy cavalry is wounded anyway, the light cav could have gone in and done a double attack on the rear. Also, I've got the empty camp. Just take the empty camp. I can't believe I didn't just take the empty camp. Ah, oh, looking back at it now, I was so determined to kill Alexander. It's a bit like these, um, like the Red Mist, like a real battle. Or, or, or I played a lot of rugby, you know, you get that game where you see mistakes on the TV. Now, why did he do that? When you're in the middle of it, it's different to the analysis you see afterwards. Here, I've got Alexander, I want that unit. Because if I can destroy it, I've got the other unit as well behind it, completely out surrounded. And then I can get around the back of his um, pikes and try and save my other commander. Sort of my Parmenian equivalent. So there we are. So we're um, returning. We're flanking. We've got Alexander completely surrounded now. Loads of attacks coming in from everywhere. We've got to kill him, right? <laughs> Wrong. Uh, I wish his photograph had come out because Yad's got such a lovely laugh. And it was, oh, it was hilarious because Alexander was, he actually won another round of combat. Didn't lay a glove on him and he hit with an ace. I'm like, he's outnumbered four units to one double flanked about to get rear attacked and he's winning <laughs> uh, look all the cards I've played there's like cards everywhere I just can't batter through this pike block in the middle uh, and also sorry you'll notice that uh, uh, unfortunately the in the left centre that Roman legion that was getting surrounded they've gone now so so I've now lost uh, two units <laughs> it's like great this game was one turn two. Uh, difficult by turn four. And I'm uh, almost losing by turn six. I've just got to kill Alexander. Turn seven, I'll be turn two. So look at the, we're just, everything, 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 everything is going to destroy Alexander. The legions have attacked and attacked and attacked and attacked. We flank attacked, attacked, attacked. Everything's trying. What I should have done, of course, is that, Blinking cavalry into the top, just turn them, taking the easy points, grab the camps, or at least one camp, two camps. Uh, and there was six points straight away. And I'm actually ah, really kicking myself now. But at the time, as I had the bit between my teeth, and I really wanted to get Alexander done. So the light cavalry, if you notice, have dropped in for the flank. Uh, they've diagonaled across because they want to get an attack in as well. The first cavalry have failed, and I got the ace, and I couldn't reactivate. Which is a shame because the say the guys at the top could have turned and attacked Alexander in the rear. So there you go. And we we had been chatting a bit and laughing and joking. I just enjoyed the drama this moment. And people were coming out to watch. I was like, is he still alive? He's like, those aces. You can see the aces. Ace, ace, ace. I've got three aces there. Killed all my activations. Uh, even with a general re-rolling and stuff. Four aces there. I just... There we are. I say, no, it's not. It is frustrating. I mean, obviously, I want to get a big win. 
set me on the right way for the tournament. But uh, he's a lovely guy. It was great fun. And these are the dramatic moments you have to enjoy. Sometimes things like this are more important than winning or losing. It's seeing great events happen. Uh, and there we are. It'll get much better. So that was pretty much it, unfortunately. I'd like to have had another half an hour or another few turns. Alexander pretty much on his own now on the right flank, winning that. My lead in the middle is looking crushed now. He's got pikes to front and rear, but he can step back this time. So he's not quite as bad as it might look. He'll just step away from there. Uh, I guess the other legion is going to have to turn. And it's going to be a bit of a Mexican standoff. But I can, I can have fun there now because they can step back and step to the left and flank charge the centre pikes. Although he has got two more units still to come in. I've got the camps open. Surely I would kill Alexandra eventually. So I do think I would have won this game uh, with a few more turns. But there you go. It was fun. Wargaming was the winner. And, uh, <laughs> and oh, funny enough, his mates behind him was looking and laughing as well. And we shook hands and uh, game drawn away. We worked the points out. It was almost identical because I think I'd lost two units. So I lost four points from ten. And he lost five points from thirteen. So I think it's a couple of points in it. It's a draw effectively and nowhere near enough points to get me up to the top tables in round two. There you go. That's round one. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Please leave your comments and let me know what uh, you think and the following rounds to follow soon. So in the meantime, keep flipping.